Okay, good morning everyone. So welcome back to this RoboCup at Home Education Online Challenge 2020. And today we have online classroom for open platform, right, OP. Um, this uh, is the fifth class. So today we will talk about robot navigation and we will start with a uh, slam mapping and also the second half will be about autonomous um, navigation. Right, today also the similarly, uh, you have me, Jeffrey, and also together with the uh, engineers from Jupiter Robot, David, and also Max. And we will show you the theory part and also the actual um, operation of the robot. And um, something a bit different from the rest of the lecture is today, we will show you both uh, operation in simulation and also in real world. And to see the comparison between these two. So, um, please stay back and um, we will show you how we can do it together after this. Right, so David, can you please um, go to the next page? Okay, so this is the arrangement. So the first half, um, about one hour or maybe a bit more, uh, we'll talk about SLAM mapping, uh, how to use our tools uh, for map. And the second half uh, is uh, how to do the autonomous uh, navigation based on the map that we have built. And both of these are, are written as simulation, but um, in fact, we will show you uh, how this thing can be done in real world as well. Uh, how we are going to port our development from simulation to real world. Okay, so I list now the Zoom link and also we, uh, as usual, we live this session on Facebook as well. So please spread this uh, Zoom link and also Facebook uh, link to your friend and colleague who are uh, not able to join or maybe joining later. So please share the link. And as a reminder, we have the website, at least now the website for the, uh, for the online challenge. So please sign up for the online challenge if you haven't. So for all the teams, as a reminder, please sign up the, uh, for the online challenge because we want to uh, communicate with you uh, with more detail about the competition as we are very closing to the uh, end of the classroom and we are going to start our preparation for our competition. So for those who haven't signed up, please sign up for the competition. And just now I've sent two links in uh, the group chat. So one is for the attendance. So please sign up for the attendance for today so that we can have a record who have attended. And the second link that um, I sent in the group chat is to a form uh, for the survey. So after this classroom and after this event, so we are going to start a new series. But um, we want to know more about the feedback about our current uh, classroom and also uh, we want to know like, for example, your preferred timing, your preferred content and so on. So please uh, fill in the form. Uh, if you didn't see the link, uh, I will share it again later on. So please fill in and, and tell us more about uh, the content and also the timing that you prefer so that we can plan something better that to suit your uh, ability, your time ability and also your preference in the model topic. Okay, so uh, finally as a privacy reminder, this uh, session will be recorded and please be careful on your privacy. Okay, next. Right, so I'll start with uh, a little bit review on our previous uh, assignment and also the prerequisite for this uh, lecture. So the first thing is um, last week we talked about um, visual perception. So you learned about how to get your data from RGBD sensor and from uh, the RGBD sensor, uh, the data that you obtain, you can do a lot of analysis and so that you can understand, you can make the robot understand the surrounding by recognize, by recognize certain color or certain people, the face, all the people recognition. So this is uh, all the things that I covered last week. And then the assignment is we combine the speech interaction, which is you develop uh, before the last week uh, class uh, with the visual perception or the vision module together to come up with various um, integrated application. For example, like in um, hospital or in a hotel, uh, front desk uh, receptionist in order for the robot to interact with the people not just by voice but also can see uh, the surrounding 
for example, like you can recognize the guests uh, so that you can have more interaction between the two to provide services. Okay, but today we are going to start uh, another topic uh, which is a bit new. So we are going to talk about navigation. So how to uh, link between navigation to this uh, work that you have uh, learned uh, is that later on I will show you how we can combine speech interaction and navigation to come up with uh, a new kind of um, application that you are going to develop for today's um, assignment and eventually uh, we need to discuss which is next week we will discuss how we can combine all these things together to become uh, a service robot application that you can design for your competition or for your service robot application later on. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the connection between the previous class and this class and eventually what we can uh, anticipate that you're able to learn uh, in the following class. Right, and as usual, if you have done some um, assignment or you have any question, please feel free to upload to GitHub and discuss with us, uh, either via um, GitHub or also you can use our Facebook group uh, for the uh, question and answer. Yeah, you can, you can ask us for any, any, if you face any problem or you want to share or you want to do some, any discussion, please feel free to contact us. Okay, next. Okay, so as usual today, um, although we are doing navigation, but all you require is just a laptop computer and you don't need other things. Okay, not, not even speaker or mic or anything, just the laptops that you have now. And if you are using um, the Jupyter Robot um, virtual box image, so you already have all the software uh, installed and configured nicely for you. Uh, that includes uh, the Ubuntu OS system, the ROS framework, and also today, we will use the Gazebo simulator for the simulation and also some other related component software. Uh, for example, the navigation package, we have the AMCL, we have the G-mapping. So I will um, introduce one by one as we go on uh, the class. Right, next. Okay, so this is uh, the arrangement for today uh, lecture. So from uh, the first half is about slam mapping, uh, slam map building. Uh, I will start from a simple explanation on mobile robot model and from there we can um, calculate or estimate the autometry uh, in order to do the localization. So this will come up with the general idea or the fundamental idea uh, about how map can be built from a mobile robot. Then in the second half, so once we have the map um, created, so how we can use the map with localization technique in order for the robot to do autonomous navigation. But before that, uh, I also will introduce one very important uh, concept, which is the robot motion planning. So how the robot actually need, uh, can plan the motion in order to do, for example, uh, the path planning. Okay, so this uh, concept is very important in order for you to understand uh, the navigation uh, process later on. Right, so this will be uh, the arrangement for today. Next. Okay, so let me start with uh, mobile robot the mobility design and principle. So as we know, uh, after the industrial robots development, so uh, roboticians or, or scientists start to think about what can robots do other than uh, the manipulation in, in industry. So we start to think like, okay, we, sh we should make the robot able to move around. So from there, we start uh, the mobile robots uh, research and development. And it is a very uh, big, research discipline in, in robotics uh, for mobile robots. And uh, as you can see on this slide, we I have uh, list down like a lot of um, mobility design and principle. So in from the earliest day, uh, we try to move the robot and then we start to see like we have a lot of different application that we can think of in different environment. For example, very rough terrain or even like up to the mass. So we have a very complicated uh, mobility design for that. So based on different requirement and different environment for the robot to move around, uh, we have designed a lot of different kind of, um, for example, legged, uh, wheel, track, climbing, and other mobility design for robots to move around the environment. And over here, we focus on wheel. 
and we focus on just a simple uh, two-wheel parallel is because um, the target uh, operation environment for service robot uh, usually is indoor and we have very, um, how to say, very moderate requirement in terms of surface uh, roughness, surface, uh, different kind of um, the requirement for indoor application is relatively lower compared to very rough terrain, for example, like in outdoor or even like, for example, very rough terrain, for example, like in Mars or in desert and so on. Okay, so this, why I introduced this mobility design is because first we need to understand the uh, model. So how are we going to do the model? So let me go to the next slide. <clears throat> yes, next slide, yes. Okay, so um, I start from this uh, simple concept on the wheel mechanism. So I list down three uh, mechanism over here that you can refer to this uh, are the most popular one among mobile robots design. So the first one is uh, parallel to wheel. So we have the parallel to wheel and that is the case that we want to study uh, in this lecture. But as a comparison, I also show you that we have the Ackermann steering and also the omnidirectional. So Ackermann steering is very easy to understand because it is uh, very similar to your bicycle or to your passenger car, which you have a steering uh, wheel in front to actually give you the direction for the cars or for your bicycle to go. Then for omnidirectional, is, uh, we are use it usually using the omnidirectional wheel, which is you can see in the middle of this uh, uh, slide, which the wheel can move in all direction, okay? And the arrangement of the wheel determine uh, this uh, moving mechanism, as you can see on the figure on the right, uh, right hand side, right top, right hand side. Uh, so for parallel to wheel, for um, Ackermann steering and omnidirectional, you can see omnidirectional give you the most flexible and the more variety in terms of uh, mobility. So how to actually um, categorize this kind of uh, uh, wheel-based uh, mechanism is uh, we can categorize them using this holonomic or non-holonomic uh, cate categorization. Okay. So what is uh, holonomic and non-holonomic? So you can imagine like um, in a 2D plane, when you want the robot to move in a 2D plane, uh, it is actually uh, this, in these three axes. So it's either the x-axis, y-axis, but not on the z-axis because um, in 2D, so your robot is not going to fly, right? Mm -hmm. So it's always on the uh, surface. So we have x and y, but one more uh, parameters is the theta, which is the orientation of the robots. Okay, so if the robot able to move in these three uh, parameters, uh, independently okay so if let's say the robot able to change in this tree independently then it is considered as holonomic which is in our real life um, most of the case we deal with non-holonomic it's because for example your bicycle or your passenger car is not able to move horizontally right that's why in car when you do parallel parking it is not that easy so if you have a holonomic design for your car then your car can actually enter into uh, the prior parking sideway easily because you can control it um, in the Y direction. But it is not the case because uh, for a passenger car, for bicycle, it is, belongs to a non holonomic design where the X, Y theta uh, it cannot be controlled independently. So which means you cannot like, for example, move sideway. Okay, so uh, most of the cases we will have a non holonomic design but as a comparison for holonomic design mobile robot, you can see those um, on uh, the figure on the right hand side bottom. So which is, you have uh, the wheel arrangement which is in four direction, and then they are, uh, they are all omnidirectional wheel, so that the robot able to move in all direction. Okay, so come back to non-holonomic, which is uh, the one that we concern. Uh, but we are not using the Ackermann steering for our indoor robot most of the case. It's because we are moving in a uh, tight environment. Because in indoor, we have um, less space to move around as compared to 
uh, passenger car or bicycle. That's why you feel very hard to move around if you want to ride your bicycle indoor, right? Because you need more space. And one of the reasons is because you can't do really pointed, which means you can't turn at the same point. Where uh, when we design the robot using parallel two wheel, we can actually do pointed. So that's why we can reduce the, rate, uh, the turning radius to zero. So that is actually uh, the difference between parallel two wheel and, and Ackerman steering that why we choose parallel two wheel for our indoor um, service robot design. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. I will tell you more about the model. Okay, so we start with the modeling of the two wheel parallel in order for you to understand how this thing can eventually calculate uh, or estimate the odometry in order to do the localization. So um, these are the four uh, parameters that is important in parallel two wheel model, which is the left wheel speed, right wheel speed, we have VL, VR, and also the turning radius, which is the overall turning radius, if uh, you are not doing the pointer, and also the wheel track. So wheel track is the, the distance between the two left and right wheel. Okay, and you, we can derive uh, the equation based on, on this parameter and also based on our model that is uh, written on the uh, right hand side. Okay, so uh, next slide I'll show you how uh, the equation is being derived. Okay, so over here you can see I, I won't go through from one to nine, but um, it is not uh, very complicated. I mean, when you look at it, it is step by step, you can convert. Uh, so we start to define the left uh, speed and also the right wheel speed. And ultimately what we want is we want the equation which is in uh, number nine is the VL and VR in terms of the total uh, robot velocity and uh, rotation, which is the omega. So why we this? this? Because uh, this four is the input and output of the robot. So what is the input of the robot? What is the input parameters that we can control is the speed of the left and right, right uh, wheels. So these are the two things that you can control when you want to do uh, your programming. So when you, do, when you do a programming, basically you are, you are controlling the speed for the left wheel and right wheel. So we have the V, L and V, R. That's, that's the, the two things that you want to uh, control, uh, the, the input. And the output of the robot is um, the V, uh, which is the velocity, and also the omega, which is the turning of the overall robot. So these are the two uh, outputs that, that we, we want from the robots. Okay, So we want to arrange these parameters um, and, and put down the equation. We want to find the relationship. So uh, based on this model, uh, we can de derive from one until eventually you get the equation number nine, which is you have uh, the robot moving behavior, which is in terms of V and Omega with your input VR and VL. So that is the model uh, for our mobile robots. Okay, so once we have the mod uh, this model, what we can do next? So we can now find the odometry. So what is the odometry? Odometry is over the time, what uh, is the distant travel? Okay, distant travel in terms of x, y, and also theta. In terms of x direction, y direction, and also the orientation of the robot. So um, you can see uh, it is actually the uh, area under the under the curve of uh, this equation. But this curve is not easy to be defined because the robot will change its course over the time. So uh, it is very hard to solve this problem using um, calculus way. So the easiest way to do uh, this um, calculation is uh, by numerical method. So over here, I show you um, two ways. For example, like you can use the strip uh, approximation or the trapezoid approximation, which is we use this numerical method um, techniques in order to calculate the area under the curve because the curve is keep on changing. But uh, as long as we can use this um, numerical method, we can easily calculate the area under the curve using this strip or trapezoid. Uh, approximation, which is, um, it is simple to calculate, but it is, um, how to say, the calculation might be quite heavy because we are going to uh, define uh, the strip or the trapezoid in a very fine strip, 
in a very fine time interval. So um, we can utilize the computer for, to assist us in terms of this operation in order to get the area under the curve uh, without solving the or integrate the uh, in the calculus way. So that is how we can get the area under the curve. So once we get the area under the curve, which means in any time of uh, the whole course, we can actually estimate the, the current robot position in terms of x, y, and data. So that is how we can get the uh, odometry. Okay, so now you understand the theory. So let's have a look how this is realized in real world. Next. So um, again, so when we put in our robot, so over here we use the turtle bot as uh, our example. So um, the odometry is, uh, we can calculate based on the data from the moving sensor, which is uh, over here, for example, we have the encoder on both the wheel, okay, or both the mobile. So from there, we able to calculate uh, the turning of the wheel with respect to time. Okay, so that is the sensor, the data that we can obtain from the encoder uh, of the robots. Okay, so with that, we can calculate the autometry in terms of the wheel rotation. Right, so from, so from here, we calculate the autometry. And okay, so we go to next to see more. Next slide. So this slide show uh, the system diagram of uh, the wheel or the wheel control in order for us to get the odometry. So we have gyro and also we have um, uh, IMU and also we have the wheel sensor and so on in the Kobuki in order for uh, to, to provide us with all the sensor data that needed. So over here we, uh, we have two sets of sensor data. So the first set is from the encoder which is you get the rotational uh, data from the wheel. Right, so there's the first set. So the first, this first uh, set of data can let us calculate the odometry, which is based on the calculation that I showed you just now, the, the, the equation based on the rotation. Okay. okay, this one is quite straightforward. You have the wheel base, you have the rotational speed, you have the size of the wheel, then you can calculate the odometry. So this one is quite straightforward and I think you can understand. And another set of um, data is from the IMU or from the gyro, which is, uh, you can understand, uh, for example, like how your mobile phone able to track your movement. So um, in all the mobile phone, we have actually the IMU uh, unit, uh, or we, use, we can use the gyro, which is, uh, it gives you the uh, sensor data of the acceleration. So as you know, you integrate the acceleration and you double integrate it, you will get the distance travel. So that is how another method to get the distance travel based on the sensor data from the gyro or the IMU. Okay. So this is uh, another set of uh, the data. So based on these two set of data, you can see on, on, the, on the diagram. So they combine together using this um, robot post EKF. So EKF stands for extended common filter. So we use common filter to put these two set of sensor data together in order to calculate uh, the time series difference, the noise and so on, in order uh, for us to get a more accurate uh, odometry uh, data. So eventually we get the odom combined, which is, uh, this is uh, generated uh, from our Kobuki and the software and also the sensor data and provide us very nice and uh, accurate uh, odometry data. So this is how we obtain this data from uh, Turbot. Okay, next. Okay, so um, extended common filter. So we use this common filter in order to, uh, to do the measurement over the time. And it, it have, uh, it tried to eliminate all the uh, noise generator, the different in terms of the times, and, and so on, in order to give you a very uh, highly accurate um, odometry data. And over here, I'm not going to explain common filter because it, it will involve a lot of mathematical equation and very long discussion in terms of the algorithm. Uh, so if you are uh, interested, I encourage you to search on the net um, about to know more
about this common filter because it's a very uh, useful and also com common uh, approach in, in mobile robots um, in this kind of um, calculation. So uh, yeah, you are advised to know more about it. So how we can get the uh, automatic. All right, next. Okay, so once we understand the concept of endometry, so now let's talk a little bit more about localization. So for localization, the purpose is to let the robot able to understand its current position. So as you know just now, if we calculate uh, the odometry, we actually can estimate the current location based on the starting point. So we, we know the starting point because that is something that you fix. You fix the starting point. So over the time, where's the robot? Uh, in one room, you can estimate based on the odometry. So based on this concept, we can start to do the mapping. Okay, so SLAM mapping. So SLAM is simultaneously localization and mapping. So you do localization uh, and at the same time, you do the mapping. So how, how it is done? So first, we understand we can do localized uh, odometry. Uh, we know the location. Then, in TurtleBot or in this kind of robots, we add in one more sensor, which is a laser scan. Okay, so um, in last week's um, lecture, uh, I mentioned about this laser rangefinder. So this is a laser scan that gives you the distant uh, data in a 2D, or maybe you can use 3D. But in this discussion, we, we, we try to start with the 2D. So which means we can see the distance of all the things in front of the robots uh, using this laser scan. Okay, so uh, you can refer to the pictures on the right hand side, which is we have uh, something like a living room and the robot, which is a third robot in white. So this is the first version in white. We can see uh, the, the, the sensor in between. So you, that is the Kinect sensor. So that is the height for the laser scan. Okay, so from the laser scan, if we move the robot around and combine all this data together, we can eventually uh, got the map uh, something look, looking something like the one on the right hand side, uh, the left hand side. So uh, it is quite straightforward. If you try to imagine looking from the top of the living room, so we have the right hand side, we have a big uh, long rectangle which is represent the sofa or three seater, then two seater on the top, and then one seater on the left hand side. Then in the middle, we have four dot. So this four dot actually represent. Uh, the, the small table, the coffee table in front of the sofa. But why four dot? It's because if you look at the height of the sensor, it is actually cutting through the leg of the, um, of the coffee table. Okay, so that is actually the plane that the robot sensor, uh, the set laser scan can see. Uh, and hence, we actually obtain uh, the data, which is the four dot, right? The four uh, corner of uh, the table. Okay, so this is the scan that we can get. So based on the odometry, we can get all the location of the robots and based on this location, we can obtain the scan and based on these two uh, sets of data, we can eventually uh, draw out the map and this whole process is what we call slam mapping. Okay, next. So um, uh, just to illustrate you, just now we have uh, the gyro and also the IMU and all these things, the odometry, which is uh, the upper part of the figure, the upper part of figure. So that one I already explained. So the lower part of figure is the, is the, is the additional of the laser scan data, which is um, over here, uh, we use um, the Kinect sensor, right? The Kinect sensor. So the Kinect sensor with all the, the open and iron manager, these are all the driver. So it will uh, give you give us the point cloud and so on. And one very important data that we use over here is this point cloud to laser scan, which generated uh, the scan, the scan data, which is the 2D scan data that we want. So we pick up this data from um, Kinect and then we combine. So now we, we, can, we can have the map. We have the map. And then the TF, the TF is actually the transfer functions where it defines uh, the, the, how to say, the change of um, reference point. So your wheel and your sensor actually 
have different um, reference points or, or, or in different uh, frame of reference. For example, the x, y uh, the, are different. So when we want to define them together, we use the TF, which is define uh, the model, the robot model. So how we transform from the wheelbase to the sensor. So this is the TF. So from this transformation, we understand the relationship uh, in different uh, coordinate system. Then together with the map, so we input this and also our laser scan, we put into this uh, module called AMCL, which is I will introduce later on, which is adaptive multi color localization, which, which is a localization method. So from there, we able to get the total uh, TF, which is uh, the localization of the robots. Okay, then we have these two set of data that we can combine them together in order for our mapping and also um, navigation. Okay, next. Right, so um, a bit more explanation about this AMCL. So how this AMCL work? Um, it is and and quite quite a how to say conceptual concept. If uh, you never heard this before, but I will recommend you to search the net to read on adaptive Monte Carlo. Uh, it's a very nice idea how to do the localization. Okay, so uh, let me explain in a very rough uh, explanation. So for example, we have the map and also we have the current uh, laser scan. So we give the initial guessing for the robot. For example, like we tell the robot, you, you, you start from here, but not so accurate, okay? So the robot will start to guess. So based on that position, what are all the neighboring point or neighboring location that fit the current laser scan? So for example, the laser scan uh, see something that in one meter, we have some wall or something. Right, so we um, the system will plot out all the location that match with this uh, sensor reading on the map itself. Okay, so we, we, we then we have a lot of points later on in operation. You can see we have a, a lot of green, green arrow, which is the particle we call it the particle. Okay, so that is uh, the, the estimation start to work. So we have uh, the first estimation, we have all the, all the green dot or the green arrow. Then after that, the robot start to adjust. So the robot start to move to the left or to the right or to the front based on your, your, your operation. So in every movement, the robot know the distance based on the odometry and it updates the, the guessing of the possible location. So for example, the robot moved to the left and uh, the front obstacle is supposed to disappear in, in, in the map, but the lasers can tell you something else or the, the, the laser scan tell you it matches. So based on this, uh, the robots, uh, the system try to eliminate all the wrong or false uh, estimation, which is start to remove uh, those particles or those locations that is not correct. So as the robot move and keep on repeating this operation, uh, the possible location start to get reduced more and more but eventually it will reduce until the final, uh, just a few cases that matches uh, all, the, all the condition. And that is uh, the actual location of the robot on the map. So this is how the local, localization works. Okay. But of course you can read more and understand more. And if you are interested on the uh, underneath um, algorithm, yeah, feel free to read more uh, from, the, uh, from the net. Okay, next. Okay, so those are all the theory part uh, of, of the explanation on, on SLAM and also odometry and also localization. So now let us um, proceed with, so how to actually start working with this. Okay, so how to start uh, the practical operation. So over here, uh, I would like to introduce you the tools that we use. So first is we're using this open slam, open slam G mapping. So we are using this G mapping tool uh, to help us to build the map in ROS. Okay. So if you want to know more about this uh, software package, you can head to the official website, which is open slam G mapping. You can read more over there. And also you can head to the ROS wiki that tell you how this tool is being wrapped into ROS. So it's the wiki and G mapping. And the uh, bottom link, 
uh, will give you the explanation on how to use this tool uh, on the TurtleBot, right, to build the map. But uh, we are going to demonstrate this whole operation and explain the technical detail uh, after this. Right. So I guess uh, I've um, tell you all the theory part and explanation. So I would like to pass this time to David to show you uh, the practical operation. David, your time is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, let's start our um, uh, work at the Jupiter robot uh, virtual box image. Uh, the first uh, of the, uh, the first thing is we needed to uh, make some change to our virtual machine uh, because the virtual machine uh, use the CPU to um, simulate the GPU in uh, virtual box or virtual system. So the first thing is we needed to change the setting of the um, CPU numbers for the virtual box. So uh, if I show you the setting here. Okay, in the tools, we click here and uh, choose the, oh, sorry. We choose the preference. We can change, oh, sorry. We change the setting of the uh, virtual machine and use this uh, power off machine. We can click here settings and we can uh, click the system. We can click here processor. That's important, processor. We need to add the, number of CPU to the maximum where you can, your computer can provide for the virtual box. Uh, I just drag the, this one to the uh, green and uh, green, max green number. This is a CPU number. And we also can uh, check the, double check the enable send 3D acceleration to make sure we can use a little help from the 3D acceleration. Uh, this is the uh, uh, setting for the virtual box before we start gazebo. So this is the first thing. Uh, and uh, this is uh, to uh, check enable 3D acceleration. I throw it before, uh, below. And next, we need to input the uh, model and the world files to, into virtual machine. Uh, if you download the zip file, uh, gazebo words here, we can drag the file into the virtual box desktop and release the button. So you will get the uh, file in the virtual box and we double click the file. We can find there are four folders in the zip file and we need to select the uh, first three, Jupyter Robot Office, Jupyter Robot Wall and uh, Mosta Room. So we uh, select three of these and uh, we use right button of mouse uh, to select uh, extract. So please remember where we store the folders. Uh, we store folders here uh, at home and we use control H to show the hidden files and the folders. You see the point before the name of the folder this means this folder is a hidden folder. We select a uh, point gazebo and then models. And uh, we use ex extract uh, and we can show the files we can find. We have, uh, for example, uh, M. There are lots of models here. Uh, uh, we can press M. Oh, okay. Um, Move that room here. And we also have the Jupyter robot and the uh, Jupyter robot office and the Jupyter robot wall here. Okay. This is the models. And then we select uh, words here and uh, use the right button of mouse, click extract, and we can choose an another position, uh, any position you, you want. I, can, I will choose the position here, just at the uh, home folder, the extract here. And then we can show the files. We, I found a Word folder here. In the, in the Word folder, we have two Word, 
two words without Robert Office and uh, Musta test word. Okay, this is uh, uh, how we we can input the model and the word file into the virtual machine. And then, okay, this is the uh, steps. And then I will show you the uh, real environment and the simulation environment here. The left uh, photo is the real environment. And uh, I just use a, a laser read finder to, uh, uh, to get the almost the same uh, distance and the size of the obstacles and the walls. And I set the uh, word, uh, the word environment in the gazebo. gazebo. And uh, we can see uh, that is almost the same in the real world environment and uh, uh, simulation environment. Okay. This will help us to uh, set up, uh, get the maps from the uh, simulation environment. And we can also use the map in the real robot to um, let the robot uh, move in the real environment. Okay. Now uh, let's use the word. The first thing we need, to, we have two methods to load the um, word. The first thing we use the uh, argue name. We use rows launch turtle boat gazebo. This is a package name and uh, turtle boat word. If we just uh, click, click uh, uh, press enter, we can load the default environment of the turtle boat. Yeah, we can see that is the robot here and we can change the angle for you to see the robot here. And if we want to use the Jupyter office, we can use the argue to specify where the word is. Just wait a moment. Huh? Okay, and then we use word, uh, sorry, word fail. Uh, yeah, home, most uh, words. The name of the word is Drew Peter Robot Office. Yeah, adult. Okay. The gazebo needs a little time to start up. So we can find our robot is in the Jupyter Office world. So the robot original position is the uh, uh, zero position of the its entire environment. So this is the uh, one way we use the argue name. And uh, we, we can also make, uh, sim make it simple if we want to use the launch fail. So I tell you how to use the launch fail. Uh, we change the, the launch fail here. We use the turtle boat simulator, turtle boat gazebo, and the launch folder. We copy turtle boat words launch, copy and the past. We get another word, we can rename it. For example, we rename it to Drew Peter Rob. Oh, no, special. Drew Peter. Robot, yeah, and we change the file at this position. Uh, line fourteen, line fourteen. Okay, here we change this to the folder we store the words. Uh, that is home. Musta. Uh, words. And uh, right, and Drew uh, P. To robot office dot w r l d. Okay, we save this uh, launch file. Close, close, and then we can use a uh, rose launch to uh, turtle. 
about gazebo and uh, just uh, do Peter launch. Do Peter robot launch. We can launch our uh, simulation environment. Okay, uh, that's we start the simulation. And then we use the um, following, following, uh, following method to get the map of the environment. And the first is the, uh, this is the second terminal. Uh, Rose launch turtle boat gazebo G mapping demo launch. Okay, G mapping. Let's minimize in size. And then the third one is the RVs. Rose launch, turtle, boat, RVs, launcher, uh, view. Uh, view navigation point launch, okay, here. Then they, we will start another windows we named the RVs. So for RVs, we need to make some change. Uh, the first is to, to accelerate the rate we run the program. So we need to small size, a minimal size, the, the different uh, the windows of the RVs. And the, the left, we have a warning here, host map be, below the local map. We click the arrow here and we change the name of the topic to map. We don't need to type, we just select the default name because this is a uh, word from the gazebo, not the real world. So we change the topic name of the uh, map. We have two warning. Uh, the first is the local map and the second is the global map. We also change the topic here to the map. Okay, we, and there is no more warning again. Okay, we can click here and we just uh, uh, make all this window smaller and uh, at the corner of the uh, desktop. Okay. Uh, we can use the view of the mouse to uh, large and uh, small the, uh, the, 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 the field. And we can use the left button to roll to the, the field. And we can use the shift Shift and left button to move the, the field. Okay. And the four, we have three windows here, uh, three terminals here. And we need another one. We can tell it off the robot. The, the other, uh, the command is rose launch turtle boat. Tell it off. Key board. Tell it off. And press enter. Uh, the command, the key from the of this uh, of this launch uh, node is uh, different as we all as we use uh, such as the arrow key or WASD key. We use the UIOGKL M uh, here, and uh, the K is the stop key, and uh, I is move forward, and the UO means uh, turn left or turn right. Uh, JK is turn left and turn right uh, with the uh, center in the center and uh, please make uh, please remember if we want to use this uh, keyboard to uh, tally up the robot you need to keep this uh, windows alive i mean this uh, windows is uh, last window you click the button of the uh, of the mouse okay let's begin uh, if for the mapping uh, we need to uh, uh, get the whole area and uh, please pay attention to my operation to the robot. I tell up the robot go around in the area. You can find that the left uh, right bottom window, RV's window, the robot will draw the uh, area automatically. The dark line or the point is the robot detect the wall or the obstacles in the environment. So the, we need to make circle at the first. The first room is very important. We, make we need to make sure the first room is uh, uh, as uh, accurate as uh, 
possible as we can. The first thing is we to make a circle here. Okay, to the start point, you can find the uh, left, right button, a uh, right, right, uh, right bottom window. The robot is drawing the map. The robot will uh, change the the shape of the map according to your operation. So it's uh, it will more and more, more and more accurate to the real environment. I mean the gazebo. Okay. This is uh, almost the almost the whole space of this uh, first room. Uh, maybe you can you will find that the uh, uh, square here in the middle of the room, the robot didn't find the uh, four edges of this obstacle. Uh, so we needed to uh, observe the obstacle more directly. I will show you. So I will turn off the robot here to get the position, uh, get the shape of this part of the room. Okay. And then I move the robot to the side of this obstacle to take a look. I mean, take a look at the obstacle. From the another side of the obstacle. So, if you have any questions, you can type the questions uh, in the chat, chat board. Okay, and I move the robot here, and I move the robot towards the obstacle, and I also turn around to get the shape of the obstacle here. Okay, we get this almost the, the shape of the obstacle on this side. Uh, please never mind the the mistake or the different uh, or the mis uh, mistake or the error of the mapping. We can change the mapping, use some software to help us to make the map more accurate. Okay, take a look at this side. I turn around. Can you turn around and get more points of the obstacles here? So this is the first room. And then I move the robot to the another room. Pay attention uh, about your operation. Do not hit the wall and the, the obstacle. Do not hit the wall and the obstacle. Uh, please uh, use slow speed to move the robot in the environment. We, I turn up the robot to the another room. Uh, I, I will change the field of view of this uh, obvious window. After I click the obvious window, I click the teleop ter terminal again to make sure the window is alive. Okay, you can find the robot here and he draw the wall. It will uh, correct the shape of the room. Uh, the robot uses a 3D, 3D sensor, not the laser, a 3D sensor to uh, observe the environment. And the odometry to get the map of this room. So maybe I will try another circle again. So if you want to accelerate the rate of the uh, robot, you can use the Q key, but not too much of this. The Q key will, acceler uh, will accelerate 10% to the current, uh, current uh, speed. Mm -hmm. 
to shelf. Okay, observe, observe this obstacle here. So this is the table of the uh, environment and the, the, the biggest one is the sofa. Okay, this is uh, just the example of the, the method we set up the map. And uh, the last step of this, uh, of uh, the mapping, we need to store the uh, map. Uh, we, you open another one. This is uh, another one, uh, terminal, and uh, we use the method. Uh, uh, come on here, rows. Hey, sorry. Uh, rows run map server oh sorry map server and uh, the node is map saver f and the pass and the name of uh, of where the map is stored for example i use the uh, home Musta and uh, uh, Cat King WS uh, maps here. We, we use uh, we, uh, we get set the name of a test, for example, test here. We can find, find the map file at the folder you select maps and uh, test here, test. This is a PGM file. Uh, we can use the software to make, uh, make some change on the map. Uh, the software is uh, G, eh? GNU image, uh, GNU image. Uh, we stop the terminal here. Okay. We can open the file, we just uh, save the map, open. And uh, Musta, can you hear maps, test. And uh, we can use a uh, pen and uh, erase to make some change and about the map. For example, I use this one, uh, not too large. And uh, color is, uh, White. Okay. I can make some change here. And then we can use the pen here. Uh, I need to change the size of the pen and the color should be the dark. We have only three colors here. The white means that is uh, available for the robot. And the dark, uh, the black means the uh, wall or the obstacle for the robot. And the green color means the, uh, the robot never being there or, the, or uh, it doesn't know where is available or not. So this is, we can change the shape of the map. Okay, just, the, just the easy. And uh, we, can, we need to save the, uh, save the file. We use here, save. Export as, export as. Uh, we use this uh, uh, export, not save. We just use export the image here and export. Okay, replace the original one, replace. Uh, use the raw export. Okay, and then we click oh, close. Uh, 
we will find we we have made some change on the image and uh, there is another one named the yaml this is a uh, some sighting of the map so the first of, first line means uh, where the pgm uh, image stored if you move the map to another folder you need to change this this position uh, this uh, folder uh, this pass according to the uh, real position of the uh, PGM file and the keep the sighting uh, as a default. Okay, I can show you the uh, file I set the I, I map the environment before. Almost, uh, it's okay. It's okay if you get the map like this. So make sure you don't move the robot too fast. And I can give some advice uh, about how to <laughs> maybe a little more. So you can take a screenshot or uh, uh, take a photo about this to help you to get the more accurate map of the environment. Okay, thank you, thank you, Jeffrey. Okay, thank you, thank you, David. All right, um, thanks, and um, I believe um, David has shared a lot of very experienced stuff inside there. So the tips and how to how to do the map, how to how to do the map is actually. You can find a lot of guys, but how to do the map accurately or uh, get a good map is very important over here. So uh, as uh, David pointed out, like these are all the tips that you can um, learn in order to improve your map. Because an accurate map is very important in order for the, to, to ensure the accuracy of your uh, navigation later. Right, so... um. Okay, so I guess uh, we have uh, completed our first half, which is uh, we already show you how we can build the map uh, using uh, our simulator, right? The gazebo. So uh, in the second half, so um, you, can, you can go through this slide. So the rest of the slide is actually uh, showing you what David have, have done, right? So for example, this is the gazebo setup. Then this is, uh, these are all the list of uh, instruction uh, that uh, David have shown you in the demonstration. So just in case you miss uh, the command, uh, you can find the command over here, the, the, all, the, all the lists over here, right? Okay, so we, we completed this first half. So I would like to take about five minutes break, okay, in order for you to um, continue with whatever you're testing to make sure that you, you're able to catch up. And also if you have any question, you can ask in the uh, group chat, okay? So you can ask us question, you can take a break, okay? And also you can like try to catch up, okay? So because like uh, we understand that we have shown you a lot, so you might start somewhere. So uh, everyone is giving, uh, uh, so we will we'll take a five minute break. So we will resume back at 11.10. So now it's 11.05. So we'll take five minutes break. So we can ask question, you can catch up with um, um, whatever that you're doing. So to make sure that everything is good, okay? So if you haven't downloaded the Gazebo World, uh, zip file you can download from our website uh, the online classroom page you can download from the number five uh, the lecture number five or class number five you can download this over there uh, together with the slides and the pdf okay so you can download from there right so for the rest of you uh, who just uh, came in okay so um i will try to do some announcement right so we can take a break okay so five minutes so i will use this time to interact with you uh, if you have any question for me or David, you can ask in the group chat. Uh, so for the meantime, I will do some announcement. So which is um, which is uh, first thing is uh, the attendance. Please fill in the attendance if you haven't. Right. The second thing is uh, a survey form. This survey form is uh, very important, right? So in order for us to provide or to plan better uh, online classroom after this, uh, because today is number fifth and next week we will have the very important one, which is we'll discuss about the competition. Uh, but after that, we will stop um, for our online classes uh, in order for you to uh, focus on the development. But for those people that would like to learn more, because we have actually a lot more materials and also we are doing some invited lecture after this, which is will give you more <laughs> professional uh, content, right? But of course, this is also professional contents, okay? Um, 
we want to improve our uh, planning in terms of the, this session organization. So please uh, take a little bit time. Maybe you just need three minutes or five minutes to, 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 to fill in this form uh, just very fast. Uh, in order for us to know what kind of topics you prefer, how the deliver method you prefer, and also most importantly, the timing for you to, to, to attend. Because I, I understand like a lot of people are told me about like, they can't attend because of the times different, because of the time they have class, they have work and so on. They cannot. So please use this survey form to tell us what is the best timing for you in order for us to uh, organize more classes after this that can suit your need, right? So yeah, I need your cooperation. And uh, as a reminder also, please sign up for the competition. Okay, we have the entry form here. You can, it's, it's on, the, on the screen. So you can go to the entry form, uh, put down, register for your team. Because next week, we will focus on uh, how to prepare for the competition. We will tell you a lot more. So like, for example, today, we show you this um, simulation environment. So it's very advisable for competition teams to use this model for your development in order for later on, if let's say you don't have robot and you need Jupyter robot to help you, to run your work in order to get the video. So uh, we recommend you to use this model and next week we'll tell you more what you should do in order for you to prepare for your competition. Right, so it's very important for you to sign up for the uh, entry. Uh, don't worry, if uh, a lot of things, for example, like your group member is, not, um, is still, still considering and so on, you just put in your entry first so that you, we can keep in touch with you, we can send you email, more detail, and we can gather and do some organization. So please uh, sign up. Okay, so another more minute. So if you have any question, uh, we are here, you can ask in the group chat. Right, or else I will rest for a minute. <laughs>